That's no, this doesn't count. Mariana. Um, all right. So now, in the last one, ladies and gentlemen, we have x squared plus 10x plus 16 divided by x squared minus 6x minus 16 divided by the rational expression x plus 8 over x squared minus 64. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned, when you're doing division, the first thing you need to do, it's fairly basic, is take your divisor and, and reciprocate it so you can write this as a multiplication problem. So x squared plus 10x plus 16 divided by x squared minus 6x minus 16 times x squared minus 64 divided by x plus 8. All I did was flip my reciprocal. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the problem and again reach out, Stephen, to each one and look to simplify, or at least to simplify by factoring the numerator and denominator of each expression. So over here, I have a rational, um, over here, I have a trinomial. Now, I'm going to give you guys some tips because I don't really want you guys to be spending so much time. Um, trying to figure all this stuff out. When you guys are looking at this, when you see that you're, when you have 16 is, your, is a positive number and the middle term is also a positive number, what that tells you is that your two factors have to be two positive factors. So let's think about it. What two numbers that are positive uh, multiply to give us 16 and add to give us 10? Positive 8 and positive 2. So I can write the next one as x plus 8 times x plus 2. Now let's go to the next one. Negative 16 and negative 6. Now my two factors, now my two factors are, or my two factors multiply to give me a negative number. Now if they multiply to give you a negative number, that means one of the factors has to be positive and one of the factors has to be negative. And if they add to give you a negative number, that means that way. You have to walk around that way. That means that you walk around to go like that. You just walk behind you. No. You walk over no. no. You're wasting people's time. So the, the larger of the numbers has to be negative. So therefore, that's going to be over x minus 8 times x plus 2. Now, automatically, I like these. I see, ooh, x squared minus 64. That's two squared numbers. So Sierra can quickly understand that that's going to be the difference of two squares. And then my other denominator, I cannot factor, so I leave that as x plus 8. So basically, guys, when we're talking about this, we're doing it like in steps. The first step is to rewrite it as a product. The second step is to factor. Now, the third step is to use what we call the division property, which basically says when you have same terms or expressions over divided by each other, then you can simply divide them to 1. So here I have x minus 8 and x minus 8, x plus 2 and x plus 2, uh, x plus 8 and x plus 8. So the only thing I'm left with is x plus 8. However, going back to my original problem, I want to see what were all the different factors, what were all the different ways that, uh, what, that were on my denominator. So I have here, I know that x cannot equal 8 and negative 2, as well as my original denominator, it cannot equal plus or minus 6. OK? And then that is it. How do you know about the 16? Because x squared minus 64 is my original denominator, right? So that factored is 6, x plus 6, x minus 6. So that's going to give you plus or minus 6 as what x cannot equal. Huh? Do you understand that this is x squared minus 64? Do you understand that that's the same thing as x plus 6 and x minus 6? Do you agree those are the same things? So if x is equal to negative 6, negative 6 plus 6 is what? What's negative 6 plus 6? Uh, zero. zero. So 0 times anything is 0. So if you have 0 times this, that's 0. You can't have 0 as your denominator. That's why x cannot equal negative 6. 
Same reason why x cannot equal positive 6. Okay.